Okay, so in this part of the clip, we're dealing with a new topic, which we are, oh, it's basically a continuation of where we are in terms of proportional, but now we basically moving over to another section that we call change in use. Uh, it's also alternatively referred to as adjusted cost, which is basically well defined in legislature. But just to basically give you a basic rough idea what adjusted cost basically means so far as legislature definition is concerned, it goes on to refer to it as the vertical portion of the actual asset in question. And you can have a look at the intricate data within the legislature. So what that means, for instance, is best uh, described within me just giving you a typical example of how change adjusted cost would likely come about. Uh, let's say we've got a particular company that produces lawn mowers. These lawn mowers are produced at a cost of a total cost of 4,000 rands, uh, but it's made out of different components to which the actual production of that total cost would be comprised of. Uh, the first cost would likely be, let's call it labor, you know, the labor portion of that 4,000 rands is 1,000 rands. Uh, then they've got uh, capitalized like overheads where they've used another asset in terms of producing the actual lawnmower. So let's call it uh, overheads that are likely to be depreciation. So we we'll call that cost, we'll say maybe it's also around about 1,000 rents. So we've got 2,000 to the whole cost so far. Then the third cost would be in, in, in saying that there was also uh, electricity which was used in the actual production of this uh, actual asset. So the electricity cost uh, counted to, to, to it also being 1,000 rents. And the last portion would have likely been maybe interest was also part of capitalized interest would have been part of making up the portion of the actual total cost of 4,000 rands where interest was also 1,000 rands. So in total, you've got a total production cost of a loan mower machine, uh, which is basically a total cost of 4,000 rands because you've got labor, you've got electricity, you've got depreciation, and you also have interest. So out of all those components, not all of those components are vertical added. So if we were to talk about labor, is it a taxable supply? No, it's not a taxable supply. So we can't include that as part of our adjusted cost. Is electricity part of like, you know, a taxable supply? Yes, it is a taxable supply. So in that sense, we can actually take that cost to be the vertical portion. So therefore, it's a taxable supply. So we'll take that 1,000 rands to be the adjusted cost so far as the other costs are concerned. We'll see how far or how many other costs we have as taxable or vertical portions. Is interest uh, a taxable supply? No, it's not a taxable supply because it's an exam. A financial service as defined so it's not going to make up the part uh, part of our just cost and lastly is capital uh, interest so we've got interest we've got electricity and we also have labor is labor part of the adjusted cost no it's not part of like a taxable supply so therefore you cannot make up part of that total cost of four thousand uh, being the vertical portion to labor as well. So we've got three costs which are not making a part of their actual cost uh, as being a vertical portion except the one portion which is electricity. Electricity is a standard weighted supply so therefore that would make it an uh, adjusted cost. So adjusted cost is basically that. So that means uh, with a percentage that we likely have We'll basically use that uh, the actual percentage and we'll bring in the adjusted cost amount that we would have worked out to be if we had to work out the adjusted cost and we compare the adjusted cost with the open market value of that particular asset and would we'll actually go on to times by uh, for, uh, 15 over 115. So that basically says that if we're using a fraction of 15 over 115 and taking the lower of either adjusted cost or open market value, it goes on to say that if we're using the fraction of 15 over 115, we then basically saying all of those components within that, uh, within that calculation comprise of vertical amounts, which is why they refer to 
adjusted cost as being changing news uh, uh, changing news cost which is also known as adjusted cost which is the vertical portion which is why we apply it with a fraction inclusive of the vertical amount that being a fraction of 15 over 115 uh, and applying it with the particular uh, percentage that we have to take into consideration so in other situations you get a situation where you could have likely had like an asset that you're using partly as like a taxable supply then also partly as an exam supply then it would depend in the direction that you're basically going to move the asset uh, within then we take that difference of the percentage and we multiply that difference of the percentage with the lower of the adjusted cost or the open market value and we'll apply the tax fraction to that and that would be the applicable uh, value that we we'll likely have to process as an input VAT or as an output VAT depending on the movement of the asset. If it was going from a taxable supply and uh, percentage which was higher and that taxable supply percentage is no longer higher it's likely reduced to maybe from 60% to 20% so we basically reduce that taxable supply to 20% that means that it's no longer now uh, uh, basically you know leaving VAT or input VAT of, of 60% as it was granted VAT of 60% by SARS it's now leaving VAT with uh, minus 20% of the taxable supply which was taken out of the actual original 60% so making it 40% taxable uh, supply so SARS would want to account for the actual 20% uh, uh, VAT that they originally gave to this asset when it was 60% so in terms of us reducing input VAT which was originally sitting at 60% now going to 40% in order for us to actually reduce our uh, input VAT what do we use we've got no choice but to actually uh, bring into effect an output VAT amount of 20% taking the actual 20% has been the actual change applying the actual percentage to the lower of adjusted cost to the actual asset and open market value whichever would be the lower of the two and timesing it by the actual fraction of 14 or uh, 15 over 115 which is our tax fraction and we likely get to see the value of the output vet that we now have to to basically process so that's the basis of having an adjusted cost within our our operations so far as a company our, our company structure would be concerned whereas if we have a situation where we formerly used to have an asset that was 100 uh, percent taxable supply then suddenly goes to 100 percent uh, and uh, exempt supply in that situation we've got totally different rules it's an exception for that for that we do not use the the uh, the, 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 the rate of saying that we're going to use the lower of adjusted cost and lower market value and applying the difference in terms of percentage no we will not use that but in this situation we basically apply market value as being the actual value that an output VAT adjustment would likely have to be performed because SARS is saying that we use the asset in the intended manner of it having being a taxable supply in the hundred in, in, in the nature of it having being a hundred percent taxable supply we would have likely claimed an input VAT of hundred percent as per a particular asset so when you change that asset from being a taxable supply from 100 percent to 100 percent being a non-exempt supply there's a change in use adjustment that we basically want based on the open market value because had you stuck to the actual plan of originally having used the actual asset as a 100 percent taxable supply asset we would have been able to claim back an output VAT based on 100%. So SARS would now want an exception to be recognized in that particular instance. So we basically go into situations where we've got such scenarios. So I do not want to opt to basically 
throw up like a table. If you listen to this clip very carefully, you understand what I'm saying. You can actually dot the lines down for yourself. And, and once you've gotten that, uh, we basically just try to elaborate that with like examples that we can basically think about and you should be actually be able to, to, to have a basis on which to actually apply the change in rule like you know uh, situation that being applicable to what we've now come to understand as being referred to as adjusted cost.